you know, 2015, we're going to really look at making this a year of love. 2015, a year of, making, a year of being love, living love. And 2015, the year of allowing our light to be seen. Allowing that universal, unique light that's within us all to be seen. It's a time. It's a beautiful time we live in. And the universe is supporting us in being our unique expression. And so our directive for this year is to allow your light to shine. I was here um, a couple weeks ago. And I think just me and Noah were here and she had to go out run around and a person came in to the church, seen the sign, and kind of wanted to know what intercourse was all about, metaphysical Christian church. So I talked with him a little bit, and then I asked him, you know, like, well, what do you do? What, you know, what are you doing in life, and how's everything going? So he's telling me uh, what he was doing with his life, and um, it just wasn't unfolding for him the way that he wanted it to. And uh, I think he came in for a little bit of guidance. Intercourse is a great place for that. So, uh, so I just listened to him talk, and um, uh, just let him go on. And then I got um, ready to share something with him, you know. So I goes, well, <clears throat> I have a, maybe a couple of suggestions that you might add into your life. And, and, and I was getting ready to give some great suggestions from God. <laughs> <laughs> and the thing that came out of his mouth was, I'm all gived out. <laughs> Maybe you need to give a little bit more to what you're doing, your experience in life, so that you can receive a little bit more. And at certain times in our life, haven't we all felt that we were all gived out? In the past. In the past. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We can look back at our past and say, oh, that was a great path that got me to here. But now that I know that I'm a child of God, and we're sons and daughters of God, and we're connected with that infinite, unlimited power of God that can flow through us, whatever we choose. That's our directive. That's who we are. To begin to, to live like that. So, so, they, so he's all given up. So then he's going to tell me, um, you know, like, uh, what he was doing and uh, how it wasn't working for him and everything. And so I just talked to him a little bit about, you know, metaphysics and the energy behind what he was attempting to create or manifest and do with his life. And as we kept talking, he got the understanding that all that he was uh, endeavoring to manifest and to do in the way that he was doing it, the way he was working so hard, there just wasn't enough God in it. And I thought that was a, a really neat realization. It's like, my work is done. Thank you. <laughs> because once we understand that we could have a little bit more room for God in our life, a little bit more room for spirit in our life, well, that's what opens up the door. That's what opens up the door, that we can get on with our life. And so I just talked to him a little bit and, and uh, just kind of told him that uh, if he just began breathing a little bit deeper and, and, and uh, just kind of let him go of a little bit, uh, that things would probably start working out for him. And, Maybe we'll see him again, we don't know. But he's invited here. Uh, all of us, we come to this planet and we are spiritual beings. We are the sons and daughters of God. And a lot of times we forget that. We get so busy with life, we disconnect from God, we can disconnect from spirit. And that's our source. That's the energy that we have to create with. And when we disconnect, from spirit, our energy source. That's when we get tired. That's when we get distracted. That's when we get disheartened, despondent, depressed. And we have disconnected from God because we forgot who we were. And it's so important for us to, to just remember who we are. Identity, to know who we are. We lose our identity. We get wrapped up in our ego and our masks, and this is who we are. And we live from that perspective, 
and we live from a raised consciousness perspective. We disconnect from spirit. We disconnect from our source. Once we begin to reconnect, our world begin to change. Like, once we begin to accept our new identity, we've identified with our personality, we've identified with our little I. The little I, with limitation. And once we begin to shift to that big I, that's what opens up the door to our unlimited nature. When we're in our little I, when we're looking at life from me, a lot of times we miss all the spiritual laws, and we also miss a lot of our flaws. Because aren't we just perfect? <laughs> and so sometimes when we stand back and then ask God, show me, reveal to me what I need to see. What do I need to see? Then we'll get that um, revelation. The light bulb goes on. Okay, I, I think I can uh, know what to, my next step can be. Because in our uh, belief system, as mere mortals, as human beings, <clears throat> we come here and there's this program that puts us in to struggle and limitation. But when we connect with our soul, when we connect with spirit, the vision of our soul is complete fulfillment of our dreams, of our walk, the complete fulfillment. See, we came here to fulfill. It's an interesting concept how we got turned the wrong way. If we do live in a loving, supportive universe, we should be able to ask and you shall receive. We've all heard that, haven't we? Ask knowing, ask knowing, and you shall receive. The teachings of Jesus have everything to do with asking and knowing. Ask knowing who you are. Ask knowing that you're a child of God. And then in that relationship with the universe, with God, the doors are open. You receive what you need. Because we are the beloved. Just having that identity. Ask knowing for what you want. A lot of people ask from a state of unworthiness. I'm not worthy, but give me this. We're probably not going to get it. Or we're going to get some kind of variation to a theme. So to begin to ask knowing, ask knowing. Jesus worked tirelessly. Jesus worked tirelessly in all that he did. But you know what? It wasn't work. It was his life. He was doing life. And uh, when we do life, and allow that universe energy to flow through us, it isn't work. And we're not doing it. I want to read in chapter 82 where Jesus is kind of reconnecting up, us up with the source. And this is a chapter after he's uh, talked with the Samaritan lady at the well. And we remember that story, don't we? <clears throat> so he tells her all about herself and kind of gives her a, an eye opener. Here's a few of your flaws. And uh, so she goes back into town to tell everybody, oh, you've got to see, meet this guy. He told me everything about myself, and he's a seer, and he's a prophet, and everything. And so the whole town just comes up the mountain to the well, and they want to see this man of God. They want to see Jesus. And when Jesus saw them come, he said to those who followed him, the disciples that were with him, he says, you need not say it is four months before the harvest time. And, and that's kind of neat to, to look at that. Because um, how many times do when we start off on our little personal mission or something, well, don't we know what's supposed to happen? Yes. You know, well, we've got to do this and this, and it'll, I'll get the payoff here. Mm -hmm. yeah. And this is one of these little um, reading between the line things that Jesus is talking about. Hey, just don't think the, the harvest time is four months off. You see, that was their own personal concept. He's connected with God. He's connected with spirit. They're connected with raised consciousness. Behold, the harvest time is now. Lift up your eyes and look. The fields are golden with the ripened grain. And what it was with these people were open now. That's, that's all it was. They were open to hear. 
See, the Word of God, they were open to feel God's love. See, and whenever people are ready, it's time. You see, and and I think in our unfoldment and uh, the manifestation that we're trying to create on our planet individually and collectively is to grasp those moments in time when it is perfect and let go, let go of the judgments that we hold about ourselves or life itself, to grasp that moment. And, and so he goes on to say that, you know, there have been people coming since time began teaching the truth and the presence and the love of God. And we're here now. We get the blessing. We get to, 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 to reap the seeds that have been sown throughout time. And, and don't you know how expanded his heart was at that time? Wow, this is, this is really neat. And, uh, and, and Philip said to Jesus, Stay now your work of time and sit beneath the olive tree and eat a portion of this food. You must be faint for your feet and not since early day. So, <laughs> he's full of energy. He's energy. This is what he came for, to share the love of the Father with anyone who is open to it. And they're saying, hey, in limited humanistic eyes, surely you're hungry, surely you're tired. You see? He's living at a completely different level because he's connected with the source. Connected with the source. Then the disciples said among themselves, who could have brought him anything to eat? They did not know that he had power to turn the very ethers into bread. And Jesus said, the master, the harvest, the master of the harvest never sends his reapers forth and feeds them not. My father who has sent me forth into the harvest field of human life will never suffer me to want. And when he calls for you to serve, lo, he will give you food, will clothe you, and shelter you. When we connect with the source, when we connect with God, whatever we're doing, if we're going to follow our guidance, we're going to be taken care of. We're going to talk to the right people. We're going to receive what we need to receive. We're going to give what we need to give. And you know what? We're going to take no thought because we're going to be in the flow. And, and see, Jesus' life was a demonstration he never sat back and said, do this and this and this. He lived. He lived the life. He was the life. He was the life. And, it's, and this little story tells us that. And the Samaritans, I think Cindy shared last week that they were at um, odds with the Jewish people because they had intermarried with the captors and stuff like that, even though they kept the, the teachings of uh, God very pure in their hearts. And and so he, said, so he says to the people that come up, think not it's strange that I came to show you God's love. God's love is for every man. God's love is for every man. And don't you think his disciples need to hear that? And you know what? It probably reaffirmed the knowing that the Samaritans had in their heart because they never gave up their faith in God. As we begin to uh, change our identity, and a lot of times we will say, yeah, we're a child of God. Yeah, I'm a child of God. <clears throat> At this moment in time, it's called beginning to mature into an adult. Adult. Adult child of God. When I was a child, I spoke like a child. I thought like a child. I reasoned like a child. And when I became an adult, I put away childish things. So we have all, our all of our experiences, all of our human experiences, in which we've had the opportunity to grow into the awareness of knowing who we really are. I am spirit. To now take those experiences, take that past, bless it, thank you. I love my past, it got me to here. And this is who I am now. This is who I am now. And then live from that identity of now. As we become aware of the spiritual laws, use the spiritual laws in our world, in our manifestation, in our creation. You see? 
Now go back to an identity. Something in the past, and we want to recreate it or run from it. We keep fear memories, so they'll scare us and keep us ever vigil, so we don't have to have that again. We keep the good, pleasurable memories, hoping, hoping that we can recreate those pleasurable moments. When we have an infinite number of options available to us, you see. I think the word that um, we could use a little bit more in our uh, life manifestation is next. So that when we have an experience that we choose, and we move through it, and then we complete it, yeah, let it go and say next. What next? Thank you, Becca, that was great. She's, she's getting it. Yeah. You say next. Well, what has our human condition been? Keep it, save it. Treasure it, honor it. It's mine. And all that does is limit us in how much can I receive? How much can I receive? You see? To love as hard as you can with your hand wide open. That was a little plaque on a birthing center room when they all was born, when you're a midwife. I was sitting there in a little rocking chair, and here's this thing. It's like, love as hard as you can with your heart, your hand wide open. You see? Instead of controlling your love, conditioning, no. Let love flow. So shifting consciousness. We shift our consciousness. As we shift our consciousness, consciousness are functioning the level of awareness, becoming aware that we are spiritual beings. So I'm going to choose to shift and begin to act, to live my new identity and let go. And we'll be asked to let go. You know that. I bet everyone here has been asked to let go of something, haven't they? Watch your things. The other night at the Bernie Bull, Cindy said, hey, anyone here who's ever, you know, shifted their life or transformed or something, stand up. A bunch of people stood up. I stood up. A few didn't, but I, I bet everyone would stand up today. Everyone would stand up. Because if we're honest and look back at our life, we'll see things that may have served us at one moment in time, but they don't serve us now. And we have courage enough to let it go. Faith in God that there would be a next. And take a step. Take a step. Here's some personal human statements. I have everything I need to be comfortable. I have everything I need to be comfortable. Isn't that a pretty cool statement? Mm -hmm. Kind of reasonable? We'd like that. How about this one? Through hard work, anything can be accomplished. Through hard work, anything can be accomplished. Oh, we've heard that one, haven't we? Mm -hmm. When I find perfect love, it'll be on my terms. Wow, some people hold out for that. When I find perfect love, it'll be on my terms. There's a lot, there's been a lot of novels written about that. Okay? And, and, and these are coming from our personal, maybe our ego identity, and the structure that we own. It's in our center genes, our subconscious. So, so here's a different way to look at it. I have everything I need to be comfortable. How's this one? I am everything I need. I am everything I need. And, and are a whole lot of you getting that one? Yeah. It's not out there. It's in here. Through hard work, anything can be accomplished. The flow of life's abundance brings me everything. The flow of life's abundance brings me everything. We know that we're a magnet. We draw to us that which we seek. It's one of those laws. Mm -hmm. We might have forgotten. You see? 
we draw to us what we choose. When I find perfect love, it will always be on my terms. I can find perfect love because I have discovered it first in myself. I can find perfect love because I have first found perfect love in myself. Looking at some of the thoughts that we hold and the way that we live our life, you know, beliefs plus inertia equals same old, same old. <laughs> so we can put a new belief in, a new identity, and allow the inertia of life to recreate life. Interesting concept. We are the ones that cut ourselves off from our source. We cut ourselves off from a source. And, and how silly is that going to seem when we wake up? Why do we wait so long? Mm -hmm. We've all done that. Yeah. But to now, now, catch yourself before we go down that road. We are to experience fulfillment as a birthright, as a part of who we are. See, that's a good birthright, isn't it? Fulfillment. We've been creators, sons and daughters of God. And it's interesting when people think that we come here to suffer. We come here to create. We come here to love. We come here to love, to be the one. So we have to be who we are. Who am I? The real you is vital and alive, shifting and changing at every moment. How many believe that? Got some out there. If we create with our thoughts, how many thoughts do we have a minute? A zillion. So to begin to understand who we are, pay attention to ourself. Pay attention to ourself. Pay attention to what we're thinking, saying, doing. What, are, what am I experiencing? That's all it is. It's really neat. The, the, the world's our mirror. The world's our mirror. You know, we create from what we see. It's really neat. For my science magazines, the last I just read an article on it, and it was about mirror neurons in our brain. You see? And we're taking stuff in all the time. We don't have to be aware of it. We don't have to be listening. We're taking it in. And we wear it back out. So to begin to pay attention to ourself. Pay attention to ourself. Keep up with ourself. Yeah. Intuition is the language of the Aquarian age. You see? The age of enlightenment. Begin to understand who we really are. Speak the language. Listen to that inner guidance that's always there. See? Allowing the divine plan to flow through you. See? Once we begin to listen and get the guidance, well, what's my to do here? And allow that divine plan to flow through us. We're going to understand that we are the plan. We're the plan. You are the plan. You are the plan in your life. And that's a heck of an understanding to begin to grasp. Just allow your uniqueness to be. Allow your uniqueness to be who you are. Everything is integral. We are all integral. Sometimes when we're all gived out, how inspired are we? Not very. See, we're not very inspired when we're all gived out. Because we've used up our options, haven't we? We just worked and worked and worked at all the old stuff that hasn't really been working for us. Or that it's just time to change because we're ready to change. So if we feel ourselves all gived out, to begin to ask. Ask for inspiration to begin to flow to me. Ask for creativity to flow to me and through me. Ask for passion to flow to me and through me. Allowing these energies to begin to, to quicken, to quicken our soul. Wake up so that we can be that which we came to be. And when we ride this energy, this energy doesn't quit. This energy isn't limited. Do 
you think Jesus was our gift out ever? No. As we allow God's love to flow through us, as Jesus allowed the love of the Father to flow through him, he didn't accomplish his mission. He was the mission. Jesus was the mission. He got out of the way and allowed God, God's love, wisdom, power, to flow through him. It's not I. It's the Father within who doeth the works. He was the mission. You are the mission in your world. You are the mission in your life. Go with them. Go with them. And ask to feel God's love. Ask to hear God's guidance. And you will get steps to take. You might have to let something go. You might have to take a chance on life. But you won't get tired. You won't get given out. Because the more you give, the more you receive. Edwin Gaines, our favorite prosperity teacher, her saying is, you can't outgive God. <laughs> Isn't that good? You can't outgive God. Who are you? This isn't blasphemy. You're the children of God. We are the children of God. And as we begin to give forth our unique essence, what we came to give, we will be supplied with even greater so that we can give even greater. That's the spiral synergy of our universe ever upward. So when we tap into spirit, when we tap into God energy, and just trust it and ride that wave. You won't get tired. You'll be given exactly what you need at the perfect moment. Let's go with him. And as we close our eyes and breathe in, let's, let's take our awareness deep within our hearts. And with each breath, just be aware of your heart beginning to grow bigger and brighter and more radiant. And I want you to allow your consciousness to move into that love and that light. And just find yourself moving through that radiant light, moving free and light through the light. And just go deeper and deeper within your heart through this radiant light, this radiant love. And I want you to find yourself in your garden, the garden of your heart. And in your garden, the Holy Spirit waits for you. And I want you to just look around your garden for a moment. Feel your heart opening. And just allow your love to radiate out into your garden. And just become aware of that Holy Spirit coming towards you now. And it can take any form or shape. But know that it's Holy Spirit. Come to commune with you in this sacred space of love. And I want you to open your heart and connect with the heart of this Holy Spirit. And just allow for that communion and love. if you have any questions or guidance that you'd like to ask from your heart. Allow that energy to flow from your heart into the heart of Holy Spirit. And just allow that flow, that energy exchange to continue heart to heart. Giving and receiving freely with clarity and understanding infused in love. Ask to see your blind spot. What you might be missing. That's creating a little resistance to your greater good. 
And just breathe in the, the answer, breathe in the vision, breathe in the awareness, breathe in the knowing. That's good. And the Holy Spirit tells you that they're always here for you. That you can come and can you at any time that you choose. Any time that you choose. So allow your love to flow them and just say thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you for being here for me. Always. And they turn and go back into the garden. And just look around your garden for a moment. Breathe in the love of this place. How good it feels, how good you feel. You are the garden. Just become aware of that radiant light just showering over you again. Feel yourself moving through the light. Lighter and freer as we move back into this room. Back into our body temples. And just breathe and feel that little quickening in your heart. Breathe and feel your feet on Mother Earth. Glad to be alive on planet Earth at this moment in time. Glad to be a conscious part of the spiritual evolution taking place on our planet. So just breathe and feel how loved you are. Breathe and feel the love you are. And just gently open your eyes. <coughs> to just be that love. the spiritual evolution of this planet, of this universe, is going to continue whether we participate or not. It just won't flow through us. It just won't flow through us. This life's a blessing. It's our choice. Choose to be the radiant light you came to be. Yeah, God. Yeah.